below the Goomba, stuck between two pipes. Well, guess I keep on gaming for the rest of my life. Hey, who would have thought it? Our boy Banjo finally made it into Smash. I gotta say, I didn't see that one coming. It's a bit of an obscure character, really. I mean, I had no idea that Random Bear from Banjo Pilot on the GBA had such a cult following. Heck, I didn't think anyone even knew this game existed. Yet here he is, in Smash. All I can say is, this game must be pretty damn good, right? Let's check it out. First, we gotta select our character. Well, gotta go with Banjo, right? Yeah, gotta love how his chest just disappears when you select him. I hope they keep that in Smash Bros. It's for small details like that, which the fans really appreciate. Anyways, uh, this mo fella tells us the rules of the game, and it's time to race. And, uh, it's not just me, right? This music sounds like something from Donkey Kong Country. D take a listen. Hmm. How interesting. It kind of seems a bit pointless having free flight movement when the stages are completely flat, right? Might as well just be in a car. And weirder yet, if you fly off the track or fly over a rough surface, you slow down. Mate, I don't think that's how planes work. See, you just uh, fly over things. Uh, that's kind of the whole appeal of flying, you know? Well, anyways, the next track and... Hold up a minute, that was fucking Espresso from Donkey Kong. I'm not seeing things right, that, that was just Espresso, right? Let's just uh, take a look. Yep, it's Espresso, just chilling there in a banjo game. Well, apparently it's a banjo game, despite this stage looking nothing like anything from Banjo-Kazooie. Something suspicious is afoot. At least the next stage actually has that snowman from the first game. Finally, something that somewhat resembles Banjo-Kazooie. I gotta say though, uh, all things considered, the game's kinda boring, you know. There's just nothing to it. There's no drifting or boost mechanics, really. You just fly. You can make sharp turns with the R button, but it's actually faster just making normal turns. So, uh, yeah, no point really doing that unless you want to make Banjo look like he's had one too many drinks. But to the final race of the cup, then. And not gonna lie, this looks ripped right from Bowser's castle from Mario Kart. I mean, you can almost picture them little cars just driving around here. Is there a law I don't know about in which lava stages have to have 90 degree sharp turns or something? Well, uh, after winning that, we're on to the first boss. Yep, that's right, this game has bosses. Well, they all pretty much identical, but still, you chase them down, shoot them with bullets, and then turn around and run away from them for a bit and repeat. Not sure what Kazooie did to piss Banjo off so much, but he's out for blood. Meanwhile, you got Kazooie pooping out eggs twice the size of your plane. Fuck me, man. Her ass must be wrecked. So, uh, you put her out of misery, and we get to see this mess of an award ceremony. Look, all your favourite characters are there, stood perfectly stationary. You got, uh, Chicken, Purple Blob, Green Vine, that, uh, Bucket from that one level in Gunty's Revenge, and a shit! What an all-star cast of characters! The most memorable characters from the whole franchise! Absolute fan favourites! And honestly, the podium ain't much better. Let's just take a minute to soak it all in. Mumbo Jumbo. Yeah, yes. My favourite part is when Mumbo Jumbo says Mumbo Jumbo 50 times. Mumbo Jumbo. Amazing. And that's pretty much the entire game. You got four cups, four bosses, and four awful award ceremonies. And sometimes, you even have to fight yourself. It's Banjo versus Banjo. I guess you really can't trust no one these days. Not even yourself. His attack? Throwing washing machines at you. And boy, does he have a lot of washing machines. But considering that all he wears are pants, he probably doesn't need them anyway. Gotta say though, this can't be good for the environment tossing all these from the sky. Heck, he's probably killed like 50 people already. Death by a falling washing machine. What a way to go. Anyways, after winning all the four cups, we have to do it again in mirror mode. Cause, you know, the courses were so complex to begin with, flipping them's really gonna throw me off, isn't it? But what else does this game have to offer? Not much, honestly. There's a mode in which you have to collect all the jiggies on a stage and beat bottles for mode. It's not bad, and it's actually a decent challenge. And doing all this unlocks a harder mode, and you unlock bottles. And, uh, well, it completely breaks the game. Seriously, 
Once you unlock him, you've ruined the game. He's like twice the goddamn speed as everyone else. Just look how far ahead I am of good Tilda over here. And these are supposed to be the hardest challenges in the game. A feckin' awful lap ahead. He's so fast, you can literally stop, turn around, pick up the jiggy you missed, and you're still in the lead. It's crazy, man, it's crazy. Not bad for a plane made from a, uh, Donkey Kong barrel. Okay, that, that's it. What the hell is with all the Donkey Kong stuff in this game? The music, the characters, and now this suspicious looking plane. Something is definitely up. Well, actually, as some of you might know, this game wasn't originally a banjo game. To the surprise of no one, it was a Donkey Kong game. Or more so, a Diddy Kong game. Diddy Kong Pilot, a game which was originally designed to use the tilt controls to control the plane, something that would have been pretty cool at the time. And man, I ain't kidding, it really is the same game, you're even flying the same barrel plane from earlier. They basically made the entire game and had to scrap it due to losing the license to Donkey Kong after Microsoft bought out Rare. It's a shame though, because these courses really do fit the theming of Donkey Kong a lot more, you know. I know the characters talk to on the races and stuff and it just feels a bit more exciting. Don't get me wrong, it ain't great, but uh, it feels a bit more natural, you know. I mean, when I see Expresso chilling over here, I'm like, that's kinda cool. But when I see Expresso and Banjo Pilot, I'm like, mate, you're in the wrong game, lad. You're in the wrong game, what are you doing? Get, get out of here. But do you want to know something even worse? They originally made an entirely different Banjo Pilot game from scratch, which was never released. And it's way better than what we got. Granted, it's only a beta, but just look at this shit. It's fully 3D. That's crazy impressive for GBA. So now, there's actually a reason you can't just fly over everything. There's wars. And the tracks are all based from actual Banjo stages, rather than just a Donkey Kong palette swap. Just look at Spiral Mountain over here. It's glorious. Despite the game not being finished and items not really working, I gotta say, I massively prefer this version. I mean, just look at it. It's probably one of the most impressive looking GBA games I've ever seen. And the 3D movement feels way better here. I mean, just look at them side to side. It's tragic really, isn't it? And look, they even fixed Banjo's animation here. So why did they scrap this clearly superior version? Well, from what I know, the development ran into some issues with the items and frame rate, and it was scrapped, but no one really seems to know the true reason. So, uh, instead of trying to fix it, they just slapped Banjo on Diddy Kong Pilot and released that instead. And that game went on to become so popular, it got a massive following, and Banjo became one of the most iconic characters of all time. And 20 years later, he ended up in Super Smash Bros, a testament to just how amazing Banjo Pilot truly was. 10 out of 10 lads, 10 out of 10. You heard it here first. And the patron of the week is Mr. Debius, a rather dubious sounding name if I do say so myself. <laughs> 